Hey guys, today marks a year since I started working as a physiotherapist. It is insane how quickly the time has come by. I don't know whether you're someone who's watched me since I was a student filming videos back at Birmingham, or whether you're someone who started watching me when I started the job, or whether you're a newcomer, but welcome. My name's Mariah, I'm a rotational physiotherapist in the UK, and I thought I would speak to you about things I've learned since being a physio, well in my first year of being a physio. I've got five and maybe a bonus um, bonus thing that I've learned. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. Thing number one, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Don't stress yourself if you don't know everything. It's a learning curve, you're continuously learning. Don't feel like, oh my God, like how am I gonna, you know, how do they expect me to be autonomous if I don't know every single thing? And will I be looked down on if I go to my colleague saying, hey, I know I've been qualified now, like now I'm qualified, I'm no longer a student, but how do I complete a discharge plan? No one's going to look at you like, you don't know how to complete a discharge plan? Like you should have that support there that you're free and able to be honest about the fact that you don't know something. And that's something that I've really learned um, in my year of being a physio that like you're not gonna know everything i'm very much a person who likes to know everything um but i came to terms with don't stress yourself out because you're not gonna know it all even those who are above you banding wise don't know everything it may look like they know everything but they don't know everything so don't stress yourself out number two kind of leading on from that make sure you make time for your cpd and to revise topics that you've encountered now even though I'm like, don't stress yourself out because you don't know everything, make note of the things you don't know. I'm not saying, ah, oh. like me, for example, I know MSK is not my strongest area. So I'm aware of that. And that like when opportunities come up or reading things come up, I make sure I read into it a little further to get a better understanding. Like make sure you make that time. You're, Alec, you're allowed CPD time. Get it. I fell into the trap, I think, in my first like, month or so of getting into the habit of doing a lot of things at home and you don't want to get into the habit because then you just stress yourself out it's not good work-life balance um but you're literally you're allowed cpd time i understand obviously clinically things may pop up and it may be a bit difficult to find that balance but you are allowed it so take it and take the time and use your initiative to revise on the topics that you realize are slipping um for instance i haven't done a lot of respiratory in a little while um apart from being on call and I've come to realise that there are certain respiratory knowledge, like there's certain aspects of respiratory and certain bits of knowledge that I was able to, I don't want to say regurgitate, but like recall faster when I was actively performing it on a regular basis versus now where I perform it in a blue moon or if I get called out, I realise that there's certain things that I'm like writing these things down because I know I have to write them down, but I'm not necessarily remembering as to why I'm writing them down. And my analysis section in my notes is a little less thick. Like, you know what I mean? It's a little less weighty and meaty than it was before because I'm like, mm, am I thinking of the right things? Am I drawing the right conclusion here? And that's something I've recognized and it's something that I know I need to work on and I have been actively working on it, looking back on my old notes to remember what these aspects mean. Number three, seek opportunities. Not all opportunities will come to you, seek them. For instance, I'm a CSP steward at work. Yes, that was an opportunity that kind of came to me in terms of it was open to anyone in the trust, anyone could apply to it. But like, it's something that I may have not found if I didn't use my initiative to approach that drop-in session that was available. If I didn't use my initiative to reach out to the contact, you know what I mean? These are little things that won't pop up. Same thing with where I've gone back to Birmingham and I've spoke to the students. That's something that if I didn't use my... I mean, they reached out to me, but that was like connections from down before when I was a student that I made with like lecturers and stuff. If I didn't use my initiative to like bring up certain things or like make those certain connections, I wouldn't get said opportunity to do these things. Like that CSP webinar I helped out with or like other things at work that... Um, for instance, being on a interview panel, that's something I would recommend that you 
do if you're able to do so. It's a great opportunity to be on the other side and see how the interview process is. But little things like that wouldn't have popped up if I didn't ask the questions, if I didn't make it clear that, hey, I'm interested. You know what I mean? Like, it's not something they scream from the rooftops in many cases. So put yourself out there, seek those opportunities. The uh, fourth thing I've got is, this may sound silly, but always walk with a marker. Like, I always find the days where I'm not walking with a marker, I'm talking like a whiteboard marker, are the days when I absolutely need one or I can't find the, like, a black one, for example. So the reasons why you should always walk with a marker or have it on you, like I used to carry one in my stethoscope case and I have one in my pocket. The ward I'm on currently, like I know where I can grab one is fine. Um, like the area I'm in, every ward has one. Um, but you need it for mobility boards to update them on a regular basis. You need it for like the handover board, the big one on the ward. So that like, you know you're walking by, you've seen a patient, you're like, mm, therapy fit or mm -mm, needs a referral. So that everybody's up to date. It may be on your personal, like the therapy whiteboard, might need to update it, walk with one, it helps. Labeling equipment helps. Anyway, now sliding onto that, kind of, you could argue this is the same similar point, but same message of carrying things. I don't know if it's definitely called medical tape, but I call it medical tape. Like that white finish tape, very sticky, very good at his job. Um, walk with that. Even if it's a, a small one, like you can get them on the ward. Like if you ask nicely, a HA or a nice, or like you have one, like a small one, you don't need the thickest piece, but like having one with you, because I don't know what other, other places like, have other trust area, like hospital, etc. But like it's handy having them, especially when I'm issuing equipment, because I always find I get to the point where I'm about to issue the equipment and I forget I need something to stick the label to this piece of equipment and then I have to go back to the ward or go back to my bag to go grab it so it's, if I have it on me it's just so much easier having the tape there handy like get something small but that's something that is really ingrained in me because I've been caught out too many times <laughs> like by not having it on me um, so that's one, have that on you, you can have it like on your lanyard, have it wherever you want, but just have it, it's nice and helpful. Um, another thing, so the last one I think that I think is really important and has helped me a lot is, so realistically, either take five minutes at the end of each day or 20 minutes at the end of each week to reflect on that week. Because now that I think back now, I can remember all of my rotations, I've done two going on three rotations at the time of filming but I don't remember all the intricate details like don't ask me about every case like don't ask me about those things like that but by having reflected and I've got like a word document where I've reflected for this whole year of me being a, like you know practitioner and qualified etc there were little moments where it was like oh I did this great thing today and like it made me feel like that that I would easily forget if I didn't have that written down to reflect on. And it's kind of nice seeing the growth as well. Like there were some moments um, earlier on in my entries where I would be frustrated at myself for not knowing something or for being mis misunderstood, for instance, they say like poor communication styles or whatever. It's like very nice being able to look back and be like, ah, you see, if I had the skills I have now, that wouldn't have happened or, oh, I would change this or I could use that from that instance to bring this forward to help me with these other instances. Um, so that's like, the, like, I think that's a really big thing for me is just reflect. The year has flown by. It's literally a twist and turn and boom, been practicing for a year. Grown a lot. Proud of myself for it to look back on it and realise that. And it's nice having that like physical, what digital in this case, <laughs> digital memoir of how far I've come. Um, yeah, very rewarding. But if you guys are either, you know, qualified as well and you're coming up to a year, what are things that like you've learned in your year? And if you're not qualified and you're still a student, maybe some of these tips and things can help you. Or maybe you have your own opinion on things that you feel like you're going to learn in your first year. But it's been a great journey. And I'll see you guys in another video where I speak about the actual transition from being a student to being qualified and how I found it. Bye guys!